All right, we have the Fisker Ocean right here. And we are at an EVgo 350 kilowatt charging station. I'm going to start it up. Plug in connector first. Let's open up the charge port. Insert the charger. I'm going to use the app to get started. All right, I am at Kirby right side and I'm going to start charging. All right, I think we are checking the cable. Charger is preparing making noises. We have the green and away we go. So far I'm seeing 171 kilowatts, around 172. All right, I got an error with the DC charger here. That's not good. All right, I'm gonna have to stop and restart. Here we go. I am going to reinsert. This is the A side, plugging this one in. All right, I am gonna try Kirby A side. Start charging. All right, take two. I am using the A connector now and it just started charging and we're ramping back up again. We are at 170, roughly 174. It's hopping around between 160 something, 162, 175. All right. Hopefully the charger won't be a problem again. It appears to be a cooling problem, most likely on the cable. One problem with the one problem with the EVgo chargers is you constantly have to hit the screen to get the details. Otherwise it goes to a uh, just the main screen, which makes it a little difficult when you're trying to record data. I'm around 30% state of charge and I noticed that the power is flipping between 156 and 168. That's pretty normal for EVs to start ramping down the kilowatts as they get full. Same problem is occurring again on the charger side. I'm getting an error. So I'm going to have to stop and go to the next one over and see if it's any better. This is the third attempt to charge.
and we have started again. I noticed that power is at 175, which is really good. Let's see how it goes from here. Around 43%, I noticed that the car's cooling fans had turned on. Just hit 50% state of charge, and the kilowatts is around 142 at this point. Just hit 60%, and we are at 131 kilowatts. Just hit 70%, and the power is 105 kilowatts. One thing I want to let you know is that the car also tells you how much it's getting. And right now it's getting in that 104 range out of the 105. Seventy-five percent is when the power dropped below a hundred kilowatts. Around seventy-eight percent, the handle remains fairly cool. The cable is not bad either, but I have noticed significant heat in this area of the car. I am guessing there is some sort of exhaust or something for the air, or the charging is in this area here, the DC input to the battery. All right, we hit 80% and power is at 94 kilowatts. Time is 25, but we need to add nine to that to get the total amount of time when I started at 9%. So 9% to 80% took roughly 34 minutes. I would also like to add that when charging on trips, 80% is a good stopping point because the speed that you're charging from 80% to 100% usually takes longer than zero to 80% because the charger has to slow down as it fills up. And if you notice, kilowatt power now has went all the way down to 39, so significantly slower. Just past 85 and now on to 86%. Power is still holding steady. Actually, it's slightly increased to 40 kilowatts from the 38 that I saw when it hit 80%. The little warning on the bottom saying that most vehicles significantly reduce their charging speed past 80% state of charge is very true in my case as well. And I just hit 90%. We're still solidly at 40 kilowatts power. Total time is just under 52 minutes. And I'm going until 100. I noticed that the cooling fans have only been running every once in a while over 94% state of charge. Power is currently 41 kilowatts. As I'm approaching 100% state of charge, I'd like to recommend only to charge from 80 to 100% if you are on a long trip where it's absolutely necessary. Otherwise, the charging is much slower than from zero to 80%. Here's some more details of the charging.
there we go 100 percent took 56 minutes 56 seconds add nine minutes to that to get my total nine percent to 100 percent charge and i'll give you the total kilowatt hours right now And as I finish charging, I have 360 miles at 100% shown on here. Here's the chart of the state of charge on the x-axis on the bottom from 9 to 100%. On the y-axis on the left, is the kilowatts from 0 to 176. You can see that the line is very interesting. There is a fairly linear drop in the charge rate from 9 to 27 percent. It stays near 175 kilowatts. From 28 to 41 percent, it stays near 168. From there, it has six drops, but notice how the rate increases throughout each of those sections. Then at 80%, the rate drops to 38 kilowatts and ends up at 41 at 100%. Here's another chart that shows the state of charge in 10% increments along with the corresponding minutes, kilowatts, and miles added. I consider the 9 to 80% the most important metric, which takes 33 minutes and adds 260 miles of range. Well, that's it for my 350 kilowatt CCS1 test at EVGO with my Fisker Ocean. Due to hiccups at the first charger on ports A and B with an overheating cable, that's slow charging a bit. But overall, I'm happy with the results. Hopefully, Fisker can fine tune the charging to reach over 200 kilowatts as promised in the original marketing materials. I hope to repeat this test again someday from 0% to 100% at one charging station. Until then, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Please like and subscribe. It helps more people find my videos. I plan on doing lots of Fisker Ocean videos, so stay tuned for multiple videos each week. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.